Let's talk about something that is very confusing in Figma, especially for beginners, and that is scaling objects in Figma, which means changing object sizes. There are two features that can be used for this. They both look very similar, but each one of those does a very different thing. And the difference between these two is usually not very obvious. So let's dive in and finally uncover the difference between scaling and scaling in Figma. Here we have two examples of objects that can be scaled, right? We have a frame and we have a circle with a stroke. Frames in Figma are a very special kind of layer group where you can set up certain rules and behaviors for these types of objects that make them ideal and necessary for, let's say, designing UIs, websites, apps, and so on. You can, for example, define that an object can be linked to specific sides of a frame. And then when you actually resize the frame, these objects are gonna stay in their place relative to the frame, right? So for example, we have this object right here that is constrained to the right and top side of the frame. And when you change the size of this frame, these objects where each of them has a special kind of behavior setup is going to respect the change of the overall dimensions of this object. Unless you define so, these objects do not change their size with their parent frame. And therefore, when we just use our selection tool and then change the sizes of these frames, all these objects within this frame are gonna, be, are gonna behave according to certain rules. If you want to learn more about frames and how they work, definitely go and check out my channel. I already did a tutorial on this, so definitely go check that out. And also here we have an ellipse that has a stroke with the width of 10 points. And when we again change the size of this ellipse, when we deform it in some way, when we, for example, hold down our shift key to uh, kind of lock the aspect ratio, you can see that the width of this stroke is not changing, right? It's 10, it remains 10 at all times. Unless instead of scaling, you decide to go for scaling, right? For the scale tool. And we're gonna do that by pressing the key on our keyboard. And then let me just change the size. And as you can see, the stroke is no longer locked to 10 points. Now it has 3.14 points width after we've used the scale tool. But again, when we then switch to the move tool, we can change these sizes and the width of the stroke is gonna remain the same. And again, when I use the scale tool, it's gonna change. When I use the move tool, it's not gonna change, right? Do you see the difference in behavior? Now I'm using the move tool and now I'm using the scale tool, right? Again, move tool, scale tool, right? different behaviors. Let's see what's the behavior with this frame and the objects that are contained within this frame when we use the move tool to scale and then when we use the scale tool to scale, right? The difference is when we use the move tool, these objects maintain their size, which is 30 by 30 points. It doesn't matter how big this frame actually is, they are going to remain at 30 points. But if we use the scale tool, this is just gonna take all that's selected and scale it up or down, depending on how much you, either by your mouse or here in this window over here. So again, move tool and scale tool. When looking at this as a beginner, you might be very confused because you basically just see an object changing sizes, but you're getting two very different behaviors. This is a necessity in Figma in order to be able to create, for example, responsive layouts or objects that maintain certain proportions. You need to have basically two different features for scaling. Let me actually additionally use text as an example. So I'm just gonna copy this text over here and then I'm gonna do two things. First of all, I'm gonna, on this top one, I'm gonna use the move tool to scale these. So I'm gonna do this. You can see the difference clearly. You can see what's happening, right? We are changing the sizes of the text area, which is in turn breaking this text onto multiple lines. But if I use the scale tool by pressing K on my keyboard, then I'll be able to do this. And as you can see, if I use the scale tool, I get this window over here that says, well, scale. 
unsurprisingly, where I can define the multiplier of our size. So when I, for example, want to make this twice as big, I just simply type in 2x, and this is just gonna take this ellipse along with the stroke, and all of this is gonna be scaled up without any concern for the elements inside. Same here, right? If I just go 2x, this is gonna be Everything's gonna be scaled up, including these rectangles that previously or usually maintain their size, right? Let me do one more example. I'm going to copy this text. I'm gonna type in button and I'm just gonna create some very basic auto layout around this button. I'm gonna create a fill and I'm gonna rename this button, right? And here we have two buttons, and on one of these, I'm gonna use regular resizing, regular scaling, and on the other one, I'm gonna use the scale tool. So, now let me actually change the width, right? You can see what's happening, right? I could also decide to actually center the contents of this auto layout, so when I do this, this is what happens, right? I change the size of this button, and there are certain rules, certain type of setup that's going to determine how this is actually going to behave. So the position of the text is changing, however the size of the text is staying the same, right? On the other hand, when I select the scale tool by pressing K, you can see what's happening when I click and drag when I want to change the width. It's just simply zooming in and out basically, right? So that's the key difference. Scaling tool is basically zooming in and out on an object whereas using the move tool to scale or just resize an object is changing the sizes while paying attention to certain rules, right? So here is the difference. And hopefully at this point you understand two things. One, what is actually the difference between scaling with the move tool and scaling with the scale tool? And two, you hopefully also understand why this is so confusing to beginners or just you know, very hard to understand and grasp at first. Especially if you're not familiar with how frame works, with how strokes actually work, and just in general how vector graphics are being rendered. So understanding this concept is actually key for creating, you know, more sophisticated designs. So let me just actually go for one more example, and that would be, let's just stay with the button, right? Um, theoretically, if you wanted to um, create a button component like this, you know, a black button with the white text, and we create two instances of this, right? Um, you shouldn't actually be doing this. You should, uh, if, if you wanted to use different sizes for a button, you should be able to, or you should be just defining this in, in within your component. But let's say you just wanna have a, an instance of the button where the size is basically 50%. So let's just use the scale tool by pressing key on my keyboard and then typing in um, 50, 50%. And this is gonna reduce the size of our button to 50%, not surprising. But then when we, use, when we use the move tool again to change the sizes of this button, you can see that again, we are adhering to the rules of the auto layout, which is keeping the items at the center. And then of course, if we change the button here, all changes are gonna be reflected in these instances. So hopefully this video has helped you to understand what's the difference between changing sizes with the move tool and scaling with the scale tool. If there's anything unclear, let me know in the comments below. And if this video helped you understand this topic, please leave a like and definitely go and check out my channel for more tutorials on Figma. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.